What started off as an apathetic attempt to entertain my friend's obsession with cold brew has opened my eyes to the world to alternate brew methods and put me on the pursuit to dial in my own cold brew technique. While it's hard to beat a hot cup of coffee on cooler mornings, cold brew is just as delicious and adds another dimension to your favorite roast. Cold brew is also one of the easiest ways to brew a consistent cup of great coffee and can be made with the items you probably already have in your cupboard. I've been able to get great brews from your everyday glass jar, but I've since moved on to a dedicated brewer for the ease of use and slightly more efficient process. Here is my cold brew routine. My cold brew brewer of choice is the one liter Tiknaka brewer. The brewer is made of four pieces that can be completely dismantled for easy cleaning. The brew basket nests neatly into the lid and can be simply removed after brewing, eliminating the need to decant your cold brew into another container. The airtight lid keeps fridge odors from contaminating your brew, but opens conveniently with a half turn when you're ready to dispense your coffee. Overall, these small convenience features make the brew process easier and more enjoyable. When it comes to coffee selection, you can brew anything from light and fruity to dark and nutty. There's no wrong answer and I encourage you to experiment. Today, I'm splitting the difference in brewing with a medium roast for no other reason than it's what I had on hand. Once you've settled on a coffee, the brew method couldn't be easier. You first need to decide if you want to brew a concentrate or ready to drink brew. Personally, I prefer to brew ready to drink since I drink my coffee black and don't want to deal with the hassle of diluting later. For ready to drink, I use a ratio similar to pour over and brew at a 1 to 16 coffee to water ratio. For this 1 liter Tiknaka brewer, I use 60 grams of coffee to 960 grams of water. The next thing to consider is grind size. Since cold brew brews for a longer time, you'll want to use an extra coarse grind. For the fellow Ode grinder, I use the coarsest setting of 11. After you have ground your beans, load up the brew basket. Now place the carafe onto the scale and measure out 960 grams of room temperature filtered water. Lower the brew basket into the water and close the lid. Finally, give the brewer a couple of inversions to ensure your grounds are fully saturated. We've now come to the only downside to cold brew, the weight. If you are in a hurry, you can either brew at room temperature for 12 hours, or if you have the time, you can brew in the fridge for 24 hours. I like to brew in the fridge since there is room for error. A couple extra hours in the fridge won't ruin your brew and I find that 24 hour intervals work better for my 9 to 5 schedule. After 24 hours, simply remove the brew basket and you're ready to enjoy. To serve, I like to pour over a large ice cube. Since my brew is pre-diluted, I want to reduce the amount of dilution that is introduced with ice. The smaller surface area to volume ratio of larger cubes ensures you can take your time enjoying your cold brew and they usually last long enough to see you through your second cup. Since hot water never makes contact with the ground, acidic oils are never fully extracted. Cold brew is less bitter, less acidic, and almost sweet when compared to hot water extraction. It's a smooth drinking experience, and if you've never had your coffee black, it's a more approachable way to try coffee in its purest form without milk or sugar. While the cup is more approachable, it does lack some balance. 
Great roasts with good hot water extraction technique bring out the perfect amount of acidity and bitterness to complement all the other notes coffee has to offer. For this reason, I still think pour over coffee is more complex and interesting. However, I have thoroughly enjoyed exploring different genre of coffee and look forward to brewing more cold brew.